Hello and welcome to another video from salesberg.com. In this video we shall be looking at Lian Li PC9N computer case. Spoiler alert, this case is meant to have a few revolutionary features. But before we get to that, let's get through the standard features as quickly as possible. So the case comes in the box as you see and the foam packaging inside was adequate. And out of the box we are greeted with a very simple looking black aluminum case. So let's go over the features quickly. In the front panel we have three optical drive bays. And to the right of it there are the two uh, indicator lights. One for power, one for hard drives obviously. And there is a little grill which allows the air intake. Beyond that everything is very plain. At the back everything is pretty much business as usual except for one little thing that we will spend more time looking at. The left side panel has room for two 120mm fans. However, by default this space comes covered. At the top there is the power button, the reset button and a little lid that covers the two USB 3 port and the audio connection ports. At the bottom there are four rubber feet and the air intake for the power supply has a removable dust filter. The front panel is constructed out of aluminum and it removes very easily just hold and pull and it comes out. And inside we have one removable dust filter for the 140mm included fan and the second position has plastic covers as you can see. No dust filter for that and the three drive bay covers can be removed just by pressing on the sides and pulling them out. Very simple. The included accessories contains a lot of screws, some cable ties, a buzzer, a USB 3 to USB 2 converter and very usefully printed manual. Once we open the left side panel things get really interesting. The first thing that we see is the back wall and the structure that we can see there is not like what we see in most other cases. Now Lian Li still calls it the motherboard tray but I refuse to call it that for a few reasons I'll explain later. For now let's just think that what the word tray means and what it is in front of us. The meanings don't line up really. So now let's look at the internal features quickly. The power supply mounting area has rubber padding for reduction of vibration. Same with hard drive mounts. The screw holes are rubber padded. There's plenty of room for a relatively large graphics card. The optical drive bays have a tool free mechanism which is quite simple. Just the lever slides out and once we slide in the optical drive, the lever goes back in position, locks in the drive. At the back, the 120mm fan has grills both inside and outside. Now this is removable grill that Lian Li provided with some thought behind it and we shall see why they are quite important. And all the expansion port brackets have thumb screws on them so that should make things a little bit easier while installing cards. And all the cables are predominantly black and some of them are black and white to indicate polarity. And the inside of the case is clear aluminum without any paint. Now there's one thing that I very seriously disliked was that there's no fan mounting position on the top neither at the bottom. So hot air rising up is a natural phenomenon that this case does not take advantage of. Moving on, the hard drive cage can be removed easily by removing the thumb screws and the cage can be set in three different ways. The cage itself does a pretty good job of securing the drives. Now for example sake let's mount an SSD and we'll show you how firm it actually holds. So it needs four screws with provided rubber footing and it slides into the cage and then let's give it a shake. More. Even harder. So if the SSD comes off that means it's one hell of a LAN party you're in. To install an optical drive simply pull out the front cover, pop out one of the drive bay covers, pull out the lever, slide in the optical drive, replace the lever and place the front panel back on and we are done. 
Now the next thing I'm going to talk about is something very interesting. Now I'm removing the rear 120 millimeter fan and the grill that is supplied with it. With the fan and the grills removed, I'll be taking off the grommets as well. What Lian Li has done over here is that they've cut a path from the liquid cooling tubes to the fan area and that is for a very specific reason. What that allows us to do is fit a fully closed liquid cooling system like what I have over here is a Antec H20920 with push-pull fan and the radiator would be sitting outside and the detail of the arrangement is such that both the outermost fan and the innermost fan gets a grill of their own to make the whole thing safe. Now the second and most important feature of this case is its motherboard mounting system. Let's call it MMS for short. Once the system was built using this system, it was a interesting sort of an experience. The new philosophy does not pay much attention towards hiding the cable as much as tying them up in neat bunches. As you can see, there are lots of cable ties visible, the cables are visible, but they are held quite securely where they are meant to be. At the back things are more interesting. This mounting system has the vertical and horizontal columns in such a fashion that you can run cable through them. They are kind of like drawers if I may put it that way. And in that column itself there are cable tie points. And we can route the cable like we are running cable through a map. With definite strategies and purpose like where the cable is going to enter the mounting system into and where it's going to exit from. It appears that Lian Li has put some thought into it as well. For example, the EPS cable is running straight up from the power supply and they've made provisions for it to run that way. Knowing that motherboards these days generally have the 8-pin or 4-pin connector right at the top. Now in relation to the motherboard mounting system, we have to look at another case, the Thermaltake Wings RS. A pretty old case, but they had a similar sort of idea behind mounting the motherboard, except once the side panel was closed, there was no room for any cable to pass through. You couldn't even put your finger through it. So this system was ineffective at that point in time. Had they continued with the idea, we would have been far along. So it's fair to say that someone may have thought the thought before, except Lian Li got it to work. Anyhow, just thought I'd throw that in. Now with regards to this case being usable, that it most definitely is. It has Lian Li's thoughtful, practical approach written all over it. Now we can see that there is a GTX 680 installed quite happily. There is liquid cooling, there is almost everything that you would need to make a reasonably good system. If someone wants to install a large CPU cooler, that's not going to be much of an issue either. What we have over here is a deep cool Frostwind CPU cooler. It's about 15 centimeters tall and after installing that, there's still enough room to work around inside the case. Closing the side panel wouldn't be a problem either. There's still room left, except if someone installs fans on the side panel, that may interfere with the cooler. So what are my thoughts about this case? Well, I do like this case very much for many reasons. Apart from the two issues such as the top and the bottom fan positions not being there and the fact that they have added fan positions on the side panel which will only add to clutter. But other than that, this is a very decent case. Keeping things in perspective of course, this case is capable of making a very decent gaming system or an all-rounder media center. Let's say with one or two graphic cards, a few hard drives, few optical drives, a decent sized cooler or even a 120 millimeter water cooling system that is fitted from the outside to give you more room inside. Being built out of aluminum, this case is quite lightweight as well. Something that people frequenting the LAN parties will truly appreciate. Build quality of this case is phenomenal. Lee and Lee's reputation lives through this case as well. Everything is impeccable. Except there are few sharp edges at the motherboard mounting system. The bandaid on my finger is a testament to that. So as a first attempt, it's not bad, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. Now that Lian Li has taken the first step, I would definitely like to see what they come up with in the next revisions and so forth. 
as far as motherboard tray the traditional stuff goes it's so yesterday i mean we talk about the quality of rubber grommets and things like that it's the same thing over and over this here is indeed a new way to go having the cables run in a logical manner a planned way that's what makes sense me personally i've always put function before looks and for me this is very natural as far as the case goes it did everything that it set out to do we built a system which was decent enough and it ran smoothly there was no thermal issues or noise issues and i've used it with different coolers and the results were quite acceptable as for the philosophy i hope other manufacturers are looking at this and they come up with other ideas bold ideas different ideas ideas that promote progress changes the norm not just revision of the same old thing but i suppose it'll take time if others would decide to play catch up at all as far as this case goes it is expected to retail at about 140 to 150 dollars give or take and at that price point an all aluminum case with good features it's not a bad deal thank you for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it what you like or disliked about this video please be sure to let us know in the comment section below and please do also remember to subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest upcoming videos hope to see you next time bye for now